back to the big board. So today we're going to look at the Battle of Lamia, which is one of the two battles out of uh, one of the C3i magazines. Put together by Selkirk Lamia is a uh, battle that took place in 208 BC. It's, uh, the, for a little bit of background, it's Philip V of Macedon versus the Aetolian League. And uh, really the, the basis of this was that uh, Marcus Lavinius went, was in northern Greece trying to form an alliance with the Aetolian League. And after some uh, promises that were made, uh, Rome sent some troops and uh, King Philip was uh, not too excited about all that, so uh, they, they got into it. And the neat thing about this particular battle is it's an opportunity for us to look at uh, phalanxes uh, fighting against cohorts and perhaps we can see a little bit about the weapon systems and, and how they uh, work against each other. I've got these things highlighted here because uh, with the special rules for simple great battles of history, <coughs> excuse me, we have uh, uh, as long as this chap here is in his command range he can activate both of these formations uh, and, and move them together and uh, uh, Furious which is the Alexander counter, can also move. Uh, and the same thing happens over on this side for these two wings. They can both move together if they're within range of Philip V. So I'm going to kick this off, and I, I'm not planning on talking us through the entire thing. I am going to be using Peter Manning's uh, modified uh, command uh, structure. So uh, I will, an uh, activation uh, structure, I should say. Each side has two command points to use. Those command points can be used to guarantee an activation or uh, reduce the die roll on uh, a momentum or momentum trump uh, by two points. Uh, so if you roll a seven, uh, it becomes a five if you use a command point. And there are a couple other things you can do with uh, the command points as well. But hopefully you'll pick it up as we go along and uh, I, I may uh, edit out the, the commentary at some point, but and speed this up so it's a little more engaging for everybody. So I'll get started and we'll uh, see how we do. It's been a while since I've actually played and I uh, find myself making the, the odd mistake here and there. So Philip actually has uh, the highest leader rating and so he is going to get to activate first. And so our auxiliaries activate automatically and we're going to uh, try and pop these guys out this way, two, four, five, and give myself a little bit of room here, one, two, three, four, five, six, six. And then uh, the next lowest rated unit uh, is also uh, these guys, and they're gonna uh, pop up, just four. And they also activate automatically. And then now we start looking at uh, all the three rated leaders, one, two, three, four, three rated leaders. And uh, since I have initiative, I get to uh, try and activate one of these guys. Well, I have initiative. Philip has initiative first. Uh, so he gets to roll and decide if he wants to use a command point, of which he has two, uh, to activate these guys. And I'm actually going to uh, use a command point and make sure that my cavalry activate. And so I don't need to roll anything. So I'm just going to move these guys. Let's try and get out wide here and see if we can't cause some trouble. Flip him to finished. And we've used one command point. Now, uh, it's furious as uh, we now go to the next lowest rated unit. And that's where we need to uh, see who gets to go first and so we take um, the initiative of each leader and roll and that will determine who, who goes next and when we add the initiative and the die rolls together Philip won and so he now gets to uh, activate his next formation which is this guy and he needs to roll a three or less to make that happen and he rolls a three, so they activate. Okay. 
We're just going to move up four because our phalanx has only moved four. And we want to keep these guys in a little bit of a formation to get started. Now, uh, so he's finished. That leaves us with these chaps, and now they need to roll. So we're going to roll for their cav first. He rolls a three, so he's in. One, seven, eight. I'll leave this way and pop these guys here. So I'm already feeling stretched a little thin here, right? Uh, these guys can go in this way, so let's see what we do. If this guy activates, I'm actually going to use a command point and make sure this guy activates because I need to move both these guys. I need to kind of drift this way. One, two, three, four, five. These guys will pop up. One, one, two, three, four. Okay, now the last, uh, these guys move now because they're the next lowest, and he has to roll to activate and rolls a four and activates. Move up four. I'm going to flip this guy to finish. Flip him to finish. Now, Philip has one command point left. He rolls a four. He might. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. We're going to pop him over here so that he can uh, be in range. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, six. Leave him there. And so he's finished. So that's the end of the first turn. I didn't flip this guy over. So now we flip everyone back over <coughs> to their non-finished sign. And we begin the next turn. So Philip has initiative. And he's going to activate his Cretan Archers again, one. I'm actually just gonna leave those guys there and just move him up one. And the next lowest rated unit is uh, these. We might have a bit of a problem over here. One, one, two, three, four. guys over a bit and try and cover the flank a little. In fact, we'll one more. Now, we need to roll for the three rated leaders. And we take the initiative of the overall commanders. I'm just going to pause this for a second. Okay, we're back. So we're second turn and we have uh, a number of three rated leaders. So uh, the, the Greeks will roll against these guys uh, to see who gets to activate their first leadership rated three leader. The red is the, okay, so they play passes to Aetolian League. And at this point, I'm going to want to use a command point and activate these guys. So I've used one for the turn. And I'm going to close the gap here a little bit. One. So one. Sorry. One, two, three. Again for the next third rate leader. I have to 
oil his chair at some point. Okay, here we go again. Okay, this time Macedon, let's go first. Let's see if we can put some hurt on here. I've got to roll. I'm just going to use a command point here. So I've now both used one. One. Let's do this. One. Two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we get a flank attack on that, and we'll put this guy here. And you'll cover that this way a little bit. So this leader, this unit, is a light cavalry unit, so it has javelins, so he will fire. He misses. So now we have to do shock. Shock attack here. We get a plus two for flank attack, plus two for t uh, troop quality. Plus one for size, so that's plus five. One for moving, plus six, no leaders, so it's plus six. Both sides need to roll to see if their leaders make the combat. Survival combat, first one does, that's the Greeks, and the second one does, that's the Aetolians. So it's a plus six, so let's roll. Eight, wow. Okay, so that's a 12, so that guy's gone, dead, done, finished. And the leader goes off. Now I have to roll for a cavalry pursuit for both those guys. I roll a two and a six. I don't remember what that means. I know the two is safe. The six is, six is under. It's not crap. You know what? Nine. We just make it. So when you do cav pursuit.